All right, if you're just watching this in post-production, please type in the number two. But we're about to get on to a live lunch and learn. How's it going, Lisa? And look, how are you guys doing? Please get your questions ready because today is going to be one of those um, question and answers. I haven't got any uh, content set up. We're just really going on with the questions that you're going to be asking me. Robert Broker, thank you. And welcome to the Prosper Ask and Prosper show. It's a Friday, Friday. Troy Holder, how are you going, my brother? And um, yeah. Get your questions all ready and let's get started. Obviously, Nicole, how are you doing? Haven't seen you in a minute. Hope you're doing fantastic, growing and doing well for yourself there. All right, so obviously for those that are just tuning in and getting ready with their questions, I want you to know that I viscerally believe that if you're running an online business, I want it to be profitable. I really want you to enjoy working in that business. And I also believe that if you're a business person, you should be able to create for and relate to those you're going to be demanding money off of. And um, essentially every single day, uh, Monday to Thursday, I sit down for 30 minutes. But today's show is a slightly longer show. It's an ask um, I mean, it's pro it's Ask and Prosper show uh, where you ask me questions and I will be answering them or trying to as we go along. And if you want me to have a look at your website, your SEO, anything to go along with that, just um, put it in the comments there and then I will be helping you by actually helping you. So treat this as your own private consultation with me uh, where you get to ask me whatever questions that are pertaining to your business so that we can actually help you right there. Anthony Kirby, how you going, brother? Thank you so much for tuning in. It was so wonderful to get to know you your story and everything else that comes along with you yesterday so thank you for availing us with that time so today basically is um is is the ask and prosper show for one for the next one hour i'll be sitting here answering um questions that you might have pertaining to starting scaling and growing an online business because i really want to inspire you to do things that actually inspire you. So you can ask me how I'm doing stuff within my business, how I'm creating content, how I'm engaging with my audience, all of the things that might help you, um, you know, get closer to your um, audience and also really make more money with less struggle. All right. So those are the things that um, I really want to be talking about. Uh, Nicole Gallo, thank you so much for tuning in. If you've got any questions, let me me know because today's show is the Ask and Prosper show. Imad Bodor, thank you so much for tuning in. Ricky Martin, thank you so much for tuning in. Nicole, if you've got any questions, let a brother know. All right, so I've been looking at a lot of things lately. Um, ah, right, and Anthony says, what's your Facebook live strategy and why? All right, so my Facebook live strategy is to get as close uh, to as many people as I can as possible. First of all, it's free. And second of all, um, I have scheduled it um, so that I appear um, for 30 minutes Monday to Thursday and one hour every Friday. Okay, the reason why I'm doing this is because video is becoming the stronghold, um, you know, for everything to do with social media. So every video that I'm putting out, um, you know, I take it off of Facebook and then I put it onto YouTube and then that therefore it creates content for me. All right. Why am I doing this? Because people are coming to the internet to get information, Anthony. So if they're going to get that information from me, um, you know, they would um, get to know me, like me and trust me. And pretty much from then on, um, you know, um, yeah, we can be able to do business together because people do business with those they know, like and trust. I hope I answered your question there, Anthony Kirby. And Anthony says, biggest lesson that you've learned in 2017. Biggest lesson that I've learned in 2017, there's two actually. First of all, do not ignore your wife. <laughs> 
Uh, because she will be growing and you are also growing in a different direction. So if you're going to be running a business, make sure those that are closest to you understand what you're doing, understand, um, you know, um, where you're going. And also they will be able to um, help you out. And one other thing that I really learned, um, you know, when it comes to business is you don't really need 500,000 leads or you don't really need, um, um, you know, all those, all those, um, you know, shiny objects that we have on the market. All you really need is a strategy. All you really need is a process that will help you get in front of your audience and use one or two different media sets to do that. If you're all over the place, you are a high sounding nothing. You know what I mean? You need to focus on focusing. That's one thing that I actually learned in 2017 and that's how I've actually grown, you know, through, you know, those social media, you know, um, you know, uh, people see what you're doing all the time. People see what you're up to, et cetera, et cetera. You are confirming who you are through what you share, what you focus on and um, what you want to be known for. So if you are not focused, if you are not putting stuff out there that solidifies who you are and how, why people should be in touch with you, it will be difficult for people to engage with your content because they too are being bombarded with content out there. So the more times it takes you to explain what you're up to, the lesser focused you are. You really need to figure out who your audience is and try and create for and relate to that audience. That's exactly, um, you know, what I learned this year. I hope I answered your question there. Now, Luke says, what would you say is the most effective advertising campaign to run? AdWords, Facebook, Insta, also, what have you found to have the best return on investment? Okay, that's a really good question right there. Um, uh, look, and how are you doing, by the way? And to start off with, it depends on where your audience is. It depends on what your audience is responsive to. It depends if your audience actually knows who you are. You could put out a Facebook ad out there. If people don't know who you are, it's going to be difficult for them to convert. They need to see your stuff at least eight to nine times before they actually convert. So find out where exactly is your audience residing and try and, um, you know, put content out there and also advertise advertise um, using those strategies because if you are a um, visual person I would suggest being seen around Instagram and maybe Facebook and a little bit of Pinterest all right because your audience is already searching so you are also just contributing to becoming part of the story you are not going against the grain all right yesterday I put up a funny picture um, you know of a, of a real estate agency that advertised in the newspaper and was urging people to click onto the advert. I don't know if they were trying to be funny or I don't know if they were trying to be, um, you know, in sync with what's happening lately, but you can tell that's an exact example of wasted ad spend that has been put on a platform that is not relating to what you're asking your audience to do. So figure out what are you selling? Where is that audience? And how can you, how best can you reach them? And then try and find out where they are and what bait they would take depending on how well they already know your business, how well they are already integrated with your work and how well, um, you know, you, are happy to be serving them, all right? So all of those platforms are good to advertise um, look, but it depends on what you're good at, it depends where your audience is, it depends what message are you trying to convert. Because in marketing, you should only remember three M's, your message, your market, and the media you're gonna be using to reach out to that m m market. So make sure your your market already knows who you are, your market already knows um, you know, what you're selling, what you're about, all of those things. And then your, me your, your, your message basically is what are you selling and who should want to know about it. And then the media you're gonna use, all of that is different, all right? Because I can give you an example. B back in the times, people were using newspapers, radios, TVs. That has been replaced by blogs, um, podcasts, and videos on YouTube, all right? So it's not that people have changed, um, you know, the way they consume ads. It's just the medium that they're receiving the ads from has changed. So you want to make sure that when you're reaching out to specific, um, you know, demographies, 
they have found where you are actually searching. I see Sandy Walker is just tuned in. Tap Shamano, thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry I haven't sent you um, the, um, the infograph that you're looking for. I mean, things have been happening. So much is happening. Getting ready and getting prepared for the new year. And I'm hoping everybody else's question is being answered. I see Robert says, do you find that people are um, undervaluing their product? And this keeps them from getting to the next level. All right. So a lot of people, um, uh, Robert, a lot of people underestimate their capabilities. A lot of people underestimate their worth. A lot of people underestimate what is possible for them, their business and everything else that comes along with it. So it's not just their own product. Um, it's, it's just they underestimate who they are because society has already made them invalid before they've even started. All right. I'll give you a perfect example. When you're watching TV, TV is designed to make you feel inadequate. When you're watching MasterChef, when you're watching um, all those reality TV shows, when a, 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 a chef or somebody that you're respecting who's participating in that show messes up and gets yelled at, you start thinking to yourself, oh my God, if they are really that good and they're messing up, what good would I be? All right. What good would I be as, as, as a general person, as an everyday person, um, you know, who cannot uh, boil toast or who cannot make any, you know, any food of my own? So if if you're not strong up there, Robert, if you're not, um, you know, confident in what you're putting out there. Half the time, you will always think that you are inadequate. Half the time, you would never put out your message. Half the time, you would always feel like, um, you know, you, 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 you are not good enough or you are an imposter in your field. All right. So this is how you can cure this. Unfollow everyone that is not serving you. There's a whole thing about us people as online business people. We want to, you know, be part or be, um, you know, following other people that are in our niche. But guess what? Those people will never purchase from you anyway. Those people will never recommend clients to you anyway. So why fill up your 5,000, um, you know, capability of reaching out to people on Facebook with people that are never going to purchase from you anyway? All right. So all of those groups that we're joining in is just to be amongst other entrepreneurs. But we all know they're never going to buy from us. They're only just going to be there to make us feel inadequate. So why do that to yourself? Make it a point for 2017, I mean 2018, to actually just really get rid of all those people that are in the same niche as you and try and reach out to people that are actually your clients and people that will actually purchase from you. If you notice everybody that's following me, everybody that's in this sort of, um, you know, category is people that have a capability of buying something off of me. I'm not following all the other gurus. I'm not following every other coach or consultant. You know why? Because at the end of the day, the more I see their stuff, the more I start coping it. And then I'm no longer authentic. And then I feel inadequate and follow them. I mean, obviously, we, we are afraid of being left out. We're afraid of missing out. But we are also not being there for our audience. You know why? Because we're busy trying to feed, you know, or trying to get the approval of people that are never going to purchase from us anyway. So if you're not putting stuff out there just because you're afraid Sally, um, you know, is better than you at live videos, then, well, you're just cheating yourself. Because Sally is never going to buy from you anyway. All right. So, David, a lot of people feel inadequate just because they are looking at what other people are doing. They are looking at somebody else's, um, you know, 100 meters, uh, you know, uh, you know, relay and not knowing that that person has been practicing for four years, five years or six years. Don't compare yourself to other people. And that way you will ship as much content out. You know, the reason why I never even look at what other people are doing is because those people that are, I'm going to be looking at will never look at my stuff. So why should I pay them the due diligence of checking on what they are doing? In any case, you, you know what happens once you start looking at other people's content, you start copying and you start, you know, validating that, oh, my existence is, is only because this person is letting me off. 
You know, so at the end of the day, you really want to make sure that if, if you're following people, just follow, watch from a distance. All right. But if you're going to be following people so that you can, um, you know, in, um, you know, imitate them, then you're just cheating yourself. Dave Kalp, how are you doing? Um, uh, Luke Corin, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Yes. Unless you're collaborating with those people, unless you are putting content together with them. You know, like what I'm doing with the, um, with the, um, um, one second, my little girl is crying. Let me just check what's going on. Uh, please be putting the questions for me. Just check. Yes. Yes, honey. Yeah. Sorry about that, but thank you so much. But what I was trying to tell you guys is, you know, if you continuously look at other people that are in your industry, they are already head and shoulders. You don't know what they have. You don't know what resources they have. You don't know, um, you know, what they, 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 they have brought in order for them to have that business, all right? So you want to make sure that every, um, you know, every person that you are either following or people that you are, are relating to are people that are going to purchase from you in the end. Now, Robert says, thank you. I like to follow people that are doing what I believe in. They aren't too many right now, but I'm working on that. Well, absolutely. At the end of the day, I mean, I'm, I'm a person that creates, so there's no point in me consuming contemporary information. If I'm going to consume content, it's I'm going to consume stuff that has got results. I'm going to consume things that are actually worked prior to what's happening on the market right now. Because I don't know if you understand, there's a time when a couple of books came out. Everybody thought they were an expert and, you know, everybody thought they could just use certain um, you know, um, um, algorithms to, to win this, this whole internet space. It doesn't work like that. Now, Sofan, how's it going, man? Thank you so much. Uh, Sofan says, what's the difference between selling info and physical products online? That's a really good question, my man. Because selling info, you're basically selling hope. All right. When you're selling info, um, you know, you're selling a, a, a dream. You're selling an idea that maybe somebody would get X, Y results after they purchase your product. But if you sell a physical product, people actually are holding that product. There's no problem for them to want proof. They can actually test it out by themselves. So when you're selling info products, you really have to show proof. You really have to show social, um, you know, um, um, what do you call it? Social, um, social proof. You really have to show that this thing has worked not only for yourself, but for other people as well. All right. Uh, Robert says selling hope. I like that. There isn't enough of that in the world. <laughs> well, at the end of the day, when people are selling hope, um, it's, it's a scenario of you um, trying to get um, what is it called? I mean, you're trying to get people to understand that if you um, if you you know, write this or you, you put in this widget into your website, it's going to work out. It's things that you don't quite understand yourself because there's a lot of things that happen when people are selling things online. You're going to need social proof. You're going to need testimonials. You're going to need a, a convincing um, sales letter or VSL. And um, it's, it's a whole different game ball. But if you're selling a, a physical pro product, people can sample this. You cannot sample a course. Do you know what I mean? You can't put out a sample of a course and, and see if it's going to work or, or try it out and see if you get results. You're going to have to buy the hope and, 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 and the, um, what do you call it? Um, you know, the anticipation that this thing is going to work for me. So Safan, that's a good question. Thank you so much um, for putting it out there. So, so it's a whole different game ball and people treat it to be the same thing, which is totally different because if you're selling a product, people will get the product after four or five business of waiting. I mean, business days of waiting. But if you're selling an info product, people can wait years, months, decades before they even see results. So you want to make sure you, 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 you know, you, you, you have to make sure that the hope that you're selling them is um, anticipated. You have answered all their questions and you know their needs before they actually ask. 
So it's a whole different game ball for selling uh, physical products and um, uh, info products. Very good question there, Sophia. And how you been doing, my man? I've got a new gig for you. Oh, I told you about it, by the way. So let's let's get in touch in the new year. Um, Luke says, what would you, what would be the number one thing you have learned by error this year? The thing that I've learned by error. Whoa, that's a really good question. Um, the thing that I've learned by error this year is to hire too quickly. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, so far <laughs> I would testify to that. I picked up a whole lot of people that I thought would be able to help me. Um, I, I went in on trust um, and some of the people did not really bring out the results that we were anticipating. And um, yeah, I, 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 I beat a little bit bigger than I could chew. Uh, so hiring is very, very important. Um, half of the time you can actually... You really have to hire by attitude um, and then you can always teach the skill. So I went in by skill and then the attitude did not really work out. Um, we're working remotely. Everything was not just um, in place, but I still have people that I trust. Uh, so fun. Um, he's a really good person. He's, 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 he's making me proud with the work that he's putting out there, etc., etc. But some of the guys, there was, there was no, I mean, the, the work was good. But there was the energy was not there. Um, we we just did not jelly. So I really really advise if you're going to be hiring, even if it's remote workers or um, <clears throat> people that are going to be helping you out with your business, it's people that are aligned to your mission. Um, you can see my energy. You know what I mean. It needs to be contained. It needs somebody that can sustain it as well. And so we didn't get that with the people that I hired right at the beginning of the year. But over um, over time, I've been learning really that you've got to bring in people that actually. Um, you know, and uh, appreciate what you're putting out there that are focused in the same direction as you're going. So that's one thing um, that I learned there. Um, look, and one thing that I also learned um, by error was people actually really like to be heard. Look, um, so that's the reason why I'm doing more of the Facebook lives because look at this, I'm actually interacting with you live and answering your questions. People really, really like. Um, to be heard so you you really want to make sure whatever you're doing the closer you are to the camera the closer you are to the bank my friend now um lewis says you're very enthusiastic what do you do when things go wrong <clears throat> when things go wrong you know murphy has this law that whatever is meant to go wrong is supposed to go wrong if you can't help the situation if you can't help um you know the outcome of the things um things are going to go wrong regardless but it's your situation and your reaction to how things have gone wrong that will determine if ever you're going to stand up from um you know from that um you know um mishap I've had so many things happening to me this year, um, but you will always see me showing up. We had a time, I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier on, when the heating was not working in the house. For three weeks, my little girl was freezing in the morning. I was hugging her every time, but I would still show up online and be there for everybody else, be there for my clients. You know why? Because that was just a phase, all right? Everything happens for you. It, 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 it's there to make you stronger as a person. We had problems with my wife, um... Yeah, obviously, I mean, there's, there's things that happen, but you would never let things get in the way of what your bigger picture is. So my really grand picture is to create a hundred million dollar company. So if water is not coming out of the shower, do you think that would stop me from going towards my goal? If um, the heating is not working in the in, in the house, would you think that would stop me towards my hundred million dollar goal? If um, people don't show up to work, do you think that's going to stop me from reaching my hundred million dollar goal? So if you've got goals so big, they actually scare small minds. It will actually scare you from stopping you from reaching your greatness, my man. I hope I answered your question there, Lewis. Just type in and let me know if that was a brilliant answer for you right there. And thank you so much, um, you know, for the <clears throat> diversity of the questions. It's actually keeping me on my toes. Um, you know, just um, really, really trying to um, catch up with everybody else. Now, Sandy, how are you going, my love? Thank you so much for tuning in. Sandy says, I totally agree. Things happen to us, uh, for us, not to us. Exactly. Because we're here to live. We're here to learn. We're here to contribute. 
all right so for you to leave you gotta have learned how to leave all right so you can't and we all learn from experience and from mistakes so don't avoid mistakes don't avoid any experiences. Welcome all experiences and choose how you're going to, um, you know, maneuver from there. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Safan says we should have bought Bitcoin back in 2011. Um, you know, the thing about Bitcoin, it is, it is, it is, oh, I don't know what to say. It's just a speculation, you know, when you, when you invest in something, it has to have some sort of return you have to be able to borrow against it all of those things that um bitcoin doesn't have and i'm not really qualified to talk about it so i mean yes you could have made money um but i feel like the real the real people are talking about investing in property and your cab driver is talking about investing in bitcoin so yeah i mean choose choose who you listen to i i really want to um, you know, grow. I really want to do something that transcends me. I'm not a person that just dabbles onto, um, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, shiny objects. You know, what, what I'm trying to create here is legacy. So if I'm going to be building a house on sand during the summer, it's not going to help my great grandkids. So I'm going to wait it out, see how it goes. Um, it's one thing that, um, yeah, it's one thing for other people that are early adopters, but for me, not my thing. Uh, Sandy Walker says, everyone has a 2020 hindsight of vision. Um, a lot of us really need a visual correction. I don't mean by seeing with the eyes. I actually mean visual correction as in you really need to focus on where are you going to be? What is going to be happening at you when you're 92 years old? Who is going to be around you? Are you going to have the dignity? Are you going to age with dignity? You know, when, when, um, when you can't help yourself, when you can't work, are the people going to want to be around you because they want to or you're paying them? All right. So that's the kind of vision that I have. Um, I don't know. It's, it's probably because I'm an immigrant. Um, you know, I know that I don't have anyone that's going to be looking after me. So I got to create those relationships. I got to create that wealth. I got to create something so that my future generations have something to step onto. So that's just me. Um, I'm, I may be an anomaly, but I know there's quite a lot of people, um, you know, that actually see the way I see things and do the way I do things. So I can't really comment on, you know, minuscule strategies, etc., etc. Now, Luke says, how would you turn a client that you have done some voluntary work for into a paid client without breaking the relationship? That's a very good question. Um, a lot of us do voluntary work, and I know exactly who you're asking about. Is that uh, a rugby team that um, you... Uh, rugby team that you did work for. So fine, I'll be with you in a moment. 2018 goal. All right. So basically what you want to do is they actually understand that you need to survive too. They actually understand that the, the, the more you are invested in their work, the better the outcome of the project. All right. We get so romantic into actually being afraid to ask money off of um, you know, people just because we don't want to sever the relationship, but people are actually rooting for our success. How are you going to pay for the computer? How are you going to pay for the softwares? How are you going to pay for maybe it's ink or whatever it is that you're using within your business in order for them to get that good quality work? You have shown them that you can actually help them. You've shown them that you can actually do it for them. So it's up to them to actually then say, Hey, listen, you've done really good work for us. We want to keep you to ourselves but in order for us to keep you we're going to um you know compensate you for your work so open up that dialogue don't be afraid to ask for money you need it all right if you don't ask for it who's gonna pay for your bills look if you don't ask for it who's gonna look after your kids if you don't ask for it who's gonna pay for your kids soccer ticket all right so you really gotta open up relationships with people in as much as they are actually also understanding you need to survive all right. Nobody's going to take away that right uh, for you, your right to survival. You got to fight for your right.
to money. Fight for your right to money, man. It's it's a God given, um, you know, advantage that you've got a gift, and people get paid for their gifts. All right. So make sure you don't let people stamp on you just so that they can get free things. And if they cannot afford to pay you, then they cannot afford the service, brother. They cannot afford the service. All right. Now, Sufan says, great. What's your number one goal for 2018? I've got three goals for 2018. First of all is to make sure my wife and my daughter have the most amazing life ever. All right, that's the goal for me, um, number one. Number two is I'm going to put out my membership site, the Online Prosperity Syndicate. Yay, it's going to be amazing. We're putting it out there. Um, all this content is going to be on the syndicate. Um, all the stuff that we're talking about is all going to be on a membership platform. So there's two types of membership. I was just writing about it earlier on. Where the hell is the information? All right, so for those that are starting off, it's going to be $42 per month, and um, the, the premium membership is going to be $83 per month. If you can't afford it, I'm sorry, um, it's not going to be any free lunch, um, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, th that's, those are two of the goals. And the third goal is to put out a book. It's about time there was an online prosperity blueprint book on the market, and I'm sorry, I'm letting everybody else down by not putting out that book. 2018, expect that thing to come out, all right? Now, Luke says, it just feels like it would be an awkward conversation. Yeah, I know, I understand, but how are you going to pay your bills? You know, who's going to pay for your fuel? Who's going to pay for your cigarettes? I know you smoke. So just look at it that way. You would spend your time trying to create and make other people happy. That won't even jump puddles for you. So would you do that? Would you... Um, I mean, I understand it. You know, it's business. Business is business. Um, what if you're renting premises? What if... You know, what if you have to pay for a lot of things in order for your business to function? So, yeah, you know, and Stephen says, uh, Stephen Sidon, how are you going, my man? Hey, Prosper, fight for your rights. <laughs> That's the one. You got to fight for your right to money. Fight for your rights to money, my friends. Okay, Beastie Boys, I'm sorry if I butchered your song, but that's how it's supposed to be. Good sir. All right, cool story. What are the questions? Ask and prosper. I like the way this is going. Come on, give us a like. Um, we're all going off the cuff, and it's just all fascinating. Everybody's getting their questions answered. And if you've got any questions, don't hesitate. Natasha Denman is in the house. Hello. Hope you're having a fantastic weekend, my love. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the Ask and Prosper show. We go in for one hour. Let me know if you've got any questions or any, um, you know, compliments you might have for the season or whatever it is you might want to know about how to start, scale and grow a prosperous business or a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Thank you so much for tuning in right there. Ruza, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Natasha says, hey, having a break from house project. Ha, 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 ha. I know you like doing your housework. I noticed the other day you were decluttering. That was very, very good to see. I think I told my wife to to follow suit. Um, I won't tell you exactly what then happened because, yeah, it didn't end well. So <laughs> I'll get her to start reading your book, um, you know, your 1,000 um, days. Hey, and in any case, while she's still here, let me just grab her Great. While you're looking at your questions, um, Natasha Denham has a really good book, 1,000 Days to a Million Dollar um, Coaching and Business from Home. So you want to make sure, um, you know, go to our website and um, grab this book, www.natashadenham.com. It was really, really um yeah, it's a really, really good book on how she uh, managed to get around and actually create a um, seven-figure business of which I'm probably going to be a part of in the next year. Now, Safan says, what's your number one productivity tip? Okay, I've got three. All right, so... Um, I've got three. Oh, does Natasha want to... Oh, okay, there we go. Natasha wants to jump on. Is she coming on or... Okay. 
Uh, Steven, I'll just answer that one real quick. Who should we get to host our websites? Either me or host Gator. Um, productivity tip. Um, so fun. Productivity is relative. What is it that you think you want to achieve? You got to have a goal. So when, when you have a goal, you reverse engineer how you're going to get there. Um, no, I'm not <laughs> next time. No, that's fine. That's fine. I don't know. For some weird reason, I got a, a, a notification, Natasha, that said you wanted to join in. So that's cool. Um, <clears throat> productivity tip there, um, uh, so fun is just, just look at what your day looks like. All right. Your day is filled up with 24 hours Four. um, I mean, eight of which you're supposed to be sleeping. And then, um, you know, some of them, it depends on what you actually do during the day. But this is what I did. I took time um, out. So starting from Monday, I looked at exactly what I was doing each and every day, each and every hour. All right. So I noticed that I spent time um, on the website. I spent time talking to prospects. I spent time... Um, um, you know, uh, looking at my YouTube videos, I spend time creating YouTube videos, etc., etc. So what you want to do for you to be productive is to actually allocate times of things that you're actually doing more of. All right. So if you are doing more videos, um, you know, allocate a time of the day, say Monday nine until 12 is when you're doing your videos. That way your brain is focused on the one thing you're not dabbling. All right. And you're not just looking at other things, touching and leaving because a lot of to do lists are not finished because people just touch that and don't complete the tasks. So if you actually allocate and schedule time, even if it's scheduling time to meet up with friends, scheduling time to um, have dinner or whatever it is, it will make you productive AF. All right. Because once you know what you're supposed to be doing at what particular time, guess what happens? You are no longer going to be found wanting or you're no longer going to be found, um, you know, trying to fix your website when you're actually supposed to be calling prospects. So everything is done efficiently because all you really need is 30 minutes of an activity every single day. And you notice that you've got so much time left during the day. So if you really want to be productive, take stock. All right. Audit your day. Find out what are you doing more of. What of those things is actually um, income generating? What of those things is closer to income generating but is needed? And what are non-negotiables? And once you demarcate all of those times, you can use an app called Time Spread, and then it creates like um, a timetable where you can actually allocate every single activity Monday you know that at nine o'clock to twelve o'clock you're fixing your website or you're writing out your blog and once you allocate that time things will be done right you get to tick off things easily but if you just say okay today is Monday let's start working you don't know where to start your mind just gets too cluttered and then guess what happens you sit on your phone a notification comes in and you start scrolling yeah, I remember one day I scrolled all the way on my Facebook. I ended up in MySpace. And I know a lot of people do that every single day. So you want to make sure that you are, you allocate different times of your day to different activities so that even if you get disrupted, you can always look either on your wall or the app that you have on your phone and it tells you exactly what uh, project or what activity you're supposed to be doing. And then you get back straight into it. Because you know what happens when you get off the phone or when you get off Facebook, you get distracted. You, it would take you another 20 minutes for you to start focusing again. And that's 20 minutes you probably don't have. And guess what? Everything takes a second to do. All right. But it's the only difference is the seconds add up. They add up into a minute. They add up into an hour and then they add up into a day. They end up into a week. They add up, they add up, they add up into a year up until it's the end of the year and you've done jack diddly. So you want to make sure you take stock of your time and take away all the destructions that are um, um, in your way. Now, um, uh, Robert says, I was not successful in finding that up time spread so far. At least I'm pretty sure I haven't found the right one. No, it's called time spread. I don't know if maybe you're using Android. 
um, I don't know what they call it on Android, but there's always, um, you know, um, um, productivity apps that you can use. Um, I don't know if you had a timetable. When we were at school, we had a timetable. And then I can just draw one for you, which is very easy. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then here is the times like that. It's that simple. All right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then these are the hours. 9 to 10, I'm probably publishing a blog. 10 to 11, I'm calling um, prospects. 1 till 2, I'm doing my Facebook Live. It's, it's that simple, guys. All right. Um, Robert says, ah, I will look at the Apple store on my iPad and then that's a good clue. Yes, it's just productivity apps. It's just, um, um, you know, apps that will help you manage your time, etc., etc. Because of all the things, time is a resource that we can never get back. So once it's wasted, it's wasted. All right. So you want to make sure that you are productive all the time, especially if you're holding work that also depends on other people, especially clients, etc., etc. All right. Um, so Fun says, uh, awesome. What's your reading list for 2018? Okay, I have a, um, I have a wish list that I have on there. This year alone, I managed to read 32 books. I want to double that in 2018. Um, half of the time is I just really stumble onto a book. And if it speaks to me at that particular time, I jump onto it. But all I know is I'm going to read 64 books in 2018. So, and 65, because the other one is the online prosperity blueprint that I'm going to write. So... 65 books is the pledge, and I want you guys to hold me accountable to that one, all right? Um, but um, yeah, there's going to be a few books that I might read. Um, a few of them, oh, I don't know, I, 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 I can't really endorse, um, endorse other people up until I've actually read the book myself. So yeah, we're going to have to wait for that one. Thank you so much for the question there, so fine. It's a really, really good one. But what I'm going to suggest is whichever way, keep learning, keep growing, because if you're not growing, you're dying, all right? So, you know, you got to keep educating yourself. You got to keep in, in, importing new information into your brain, because then that opens up, um, you know, your productivity, that opens up your creativity, and that opens up a whole new world that you are never going to be able to access if you did not read anything. Even reading a newspaper, I mean, obviously, newspapers these days have negative information, but just a blog from entrepreneur, from success, or whatever it is, just try and read something for 30 minutes at least um, a day, because apparently an average um, you know, in, an average American reads half a book for a whole full year. Now, can you imagine how further along you're going to be from everybody else and their bullshit if you're reading at least 30 minutes a day? All right. Now, if you want to go on to certain levels where you read 30, 40 books. Mm, OK, now, Sandy says I use audible.com to listen to great books while driving or on my lunch break. Absolutely. Because. Whichever way you consume content, either visual, audio, um, maybe you, you consume content by regurgitating it, it's all up to you. Whichever way, just make sure you're getting something new that, um, you know, that's coming into your brain. Because if you cut an orange in half and squeeze it, what do you get? You get orange juice, right? So... Whatever is in there is what will come out of there and is what you will write. So garbage in, garbage out. So you want to make sure that whatever books you're going to be reading, whatever stuff you're going to be putting out there is definitely designed to help you, propel you to go um, further with your work. Now Sandy says, well, until Prosper came along, I filled my lunch breaks. Absolutely. I appreciate that a lot. All right. Now, Safan says, um, did Facebook roll out Facebook Watch in Australia? Um, Facebook Watch is still reserved to those people that are actually creating content, um, you know, for like Apple TV and stuff like that. Gary Vaynerchuk has a, a Facebook Watch, but I have since applied uh, to be considered as soon as they roll it out. So nobody has... Um, you know, Facebook watch here yet. And I don't think we also have that um, Facebook live 
audio in Australia. I haven't seen anybody doing it as much. I don't have that option. So it hasn't been rolled out there, Sofian. But it, as soon as it does, this show is going to be on there. The Online Prosperity Show is going to be on there. The, um, um, and also the, uh, the Lunch and Learn is going to be on there. Now, Scott Woodrow says, what is a great book to start 2018 with? Good question. Uh, great book to start 2018 with. It, it depends on your journey right now, my man. But I would, I would ask you to read The Monk That Sold His Ferrari or The Go-Giver. All right? Because now we're living in an environment where you actually have to make sure you look after yourself first before you look after everybody else. All right? So if you read books like um, that from Robin Sharma, it will open up your mind to what exactly is out there and, 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 and how giving is now the, the latest way of actually, um, you know, getting more, um, you know, with, with, with what's happening. Because there's a lot of content out there on the market. And if you're not giving out stuff, if you're not actually showing people you can help them by actually helping them, um, it's it's going to be difficult for you to matter in 2018. So you really want to start off the year with something that um, is going to propel you to be a giver, a contributor to the greater good. All right. Now, Robert says, I found time straight timetable for iPhone only. So I'm putting it on my iPad. And if it falls into, if it fails to operate properly there, I will dig out my iPhone 4S and use it on Wi-Fi. <laughs> Absolutely. I like it. I like that you're an action taker. You heard something and then you already put it into practice. That's so good. Show Nick. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today is um, the Ask and Prosper show. Um, we've been going on for 30 minutes. If you've got any questions, let a brother know and we will be answering them as we go along. I'm hoping everybody has had a fantastic year. And I'm hoping everybody is all geared up and ready to start a whole brand a new year that's coming along, all right? But if you haven't started focusing on what you're going to be doing, who you're going to be in 2018, I think this is right about the time to start taking stock and full audit as to who are you, who you're going to be serving, and why should people care to hear it from you. And whatever you're going to do, your values should really, really stand head and shoulders above, um, you know, everything else that you're going to be doing and make sure that you are actually creating for and relating to the audience you're going to be demanding money off of. Now, Sofan says, heard Gary V rant a lot lately about voice technologies like podcasts, ETC. Are you planning on doing something like that in 2018? Absolutely. Voice, voice seems to be um, going strong because people have stopped listening to radio. People have stopped, um, you know, people have become more active. So it's better for them to actually be listening to something positive or something um, motivational on the way. So you really also want to be in that space. Um, yes, I will be putting out a lot of voice stuff. I already have an Anchor channel. If people haven't heard about it, Anchor dot fm i have a channel on there where i just put out my rants and my stories on there and also being an seo expert we know that voice is literally controlling the amount of searches that are happening online so people are asking siri where the next um you know co co computer shop is people are asking siri where you know the next gym is so we are also really gearing up for voice um, and I'm also learning a few skills from Alexa. So yes, you're right. 2018 is the um, the year of voice, but I'm more of a video guy. So my audience already uh, anticipates video from me. I will still, um, you know, continue to provide content using this modality. Now, Samantha Newman, thank you so much for tuning in. Michael Fronias, thank you so much for tuning in. This is the Ask and Prosper show every Friday um, from 2 p.m. AEST to 3 p.m. AEST. We sit around here and I answer any questions that you might have within reason and see if we can actually help you by actually helping you. And as you quite know, I really want that 
every business that I'm working with as profitable and enjoyable. All right, Michael, thank you so much for tuning in. All right, so at the end of the day, um, one other thing that's probably going to be happening in 2018 is authenticity. This, what I just did right now is a pure indication of how authentic my work is i'm just asking answering questions i don't know what to expect so you really really have to put yourself out there and help people by actually helping them and sandy says um that's because you are <laughs> oh thank you so much authenticity and context exactly all right so every every day from um monday to thursday at 2 p.m we we generally just are giving out content 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 and this is the time you can actually unpack it and um you know make use of um you know the time that you have with me and treat this as your own private consultation because if it's going to be one-on-one -on -one with me we're talking 450 dollars and that's a little bit too much for a lot of people all right so like i was saying authenticity forget being the ideal person in 2017 be the real deal all right People see right through, uh, you know, uh, pretensions and, and besides, you know, there's nothing called perfect. You can't wait until you're perfect. So just make sure you're, you're putting yourself out there because authenticity is a really big deal, guys. And when you're, when you're talking about your own personal brand, which is, which is exactly what you need to be doing in 2018, crafting your own personal brand. All right. So there's never a brand that is perfect. Every brand, every, you know, once in a while you hear about them in the news. Oh my God, they did this or they did that to that other person. Just keep doing, you know what I mean? Because there's always people that will see wrong, even if uh, everything is right. So you can't, you know, make anybody happy these days, even if you're giving them chocolate, even if you're giving them, um, you know, you know, uh, whatever, whatever sweet things or hugs you might be. Treat it as a, as, a, as a pedophile. If you're giving them chocolate, some of them are allergic to nuts. So you can't please anyone. So don't even try to. Now, um, uh, Sofan says, what will we do when AI and robots take our jobs? Keep reskilling, my friend. Um, you know, every everything that we're, we're using right now, this particular moment was probably not there 30 years ago. So how do we know that what we have right now is still going to be relevant or is still going to be useful in the next 30 years? Because we're humans. We're always, um, you know, transcending. We're always shifting and we're always changing. So always, if you, if you get too complacent or if you get too comfortable, you'll be left behind. So always, um, you know, keep re-energizing yourself. Keep learning new things that way, my friend. You will never be afraid of AI or robots or anything else that comes along the way like that. Now, Samantha says, I always want to be perfect before I get out there. It's scary world. Well, you're going to wait all your life, Samantha. Nobody cares. I'm going to tell you right now, nobody cares. All right. So you might think, oh, oh my God, um, people are going to think I'm not dressed up properly. Nobody gives a rat's ass, all right? What people really worry about is how are you gonna help me? What's in it for them, all right? So if I worried about, oh my God, my skin color, oh, my accent is not the best, oh my God, my voice is about to go, do you think anybody would care? Nobody cares, bruh. Nobody cares. And, and I think if, if you're going to be doing anything of substance, you should actually want it to exist in the world unless what you're doing is meaningless. All right. So that's why I always encourage people to do meaningful work, because if you're doing something that would help other people be to and have a happier existence, why would you want to hide that? Why would you want to hide it? You know, so at the end of the day, if you're not doing something of substance, sorry, I've got no time for that. Now, oh no, when you introduce your product or brand and get out there. Well, if it's a meaningless product, nobody wants to hear about it. But if it's going to help somebody, why would you stop yourself from actually helping people? You know, because if you stop, if you, if you continuously worry about yourself, nobody cares. All right. Um, you say, yes, definitely. Wanting to exist in the world is amazing. Right. Because if your thing is going to help other kids 
to, to stop having asthma attacks, if your product is going to help other people be doing and have a happier existence, who are you to stop yourself from re reaching out to people if you're being helpful? Unless you're just creepy and unless you're, you're, you're trying to steal from people, yes, that's when you will feel intimidated because your own soul is telling you that what you're doing is wrong. But if you're doing meaningful work that is designed to help other people be to and have a happier existence, why would you stop yourself? Why would you do that? All right? Unless you're doing shady jobs, things that people don't want, then I don't want to hear about it. But if you've got meaningful work that is designed to help other people be to and have a happier existence, are you that selfish? Are you that selfish, Samantha? I don't think so. So if you're going to be worried about how you look, then shame on you. Shame on you for being petty. All right? Nobody cares. You're here to learn. You're here to live. You're here to contribute. If you're not contributing anything, then why the hell are you wasting our air? All right, Samantha says, because I'm silly. I think you are not doing that. Anyone I want to help with kids who have asthma. No, not selfish at all. So go out there and do it. Go out there and save lives. Unless your thing is meaningless and I don't want to hear about it. Or hear from you ever again. If you're not helping people out there, get off my life feed. Nobody has time for that. Alex Phillips, how's it going, my man? Thank you so much for tuning in. All right. So at the end of the day, just go out there and start. If you, yes, just do it. You know, nobody has time for your pity parties, especially with me. That's the wrong show for that. I want to help people be, do, and have. I want to work with people that are going somewhere. You know? If you're not ready, if you're not doing meaningful stuff out there, make road. Go away. Why would you do that to yourself, to us, to everybody else, and waste everybody else's time? Why would you do that? All right. So once you've started working and doing stuff, you got to be consistent. All right. And put, put content out there. Make it compelling for people. You know? At the end of the day, I really want that people start scale and grow a business that's actually profitable and they enjoy working in it. And half of it is actually helping other people. So far, I'm sorry, I lost your question. What was it? Um, what was the question? What's your advice for people who want to start doing Facebook Live and YouTube videos? Oh, okay. Yes, that's a really good one. My advice is just start. Have have a, a, a reason to want to do, um, you know, those lives. Are you are you going to be helping people um, and be consistent with the content? Because you can't just hook people on and then leave them hanging. Would you like being turned on and just be left, um, you know, in the room by yourself? So once you start, commit to that. Create consistent content. Make it compelling for your target audience. You know, and then the best way you can find out, you know, that that content is, 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 is really who you are because people want to get to know who you are, like you and trust you. Who do you want to be in front of? Decide who your target audience is going to be and then find out what kind of information would actually help them so fun. And what's the best format for you to provide that content to them? Is it written? Is it video? Is it recorded? All of those things. All right. Uh, Robert says, whoa, I don't know what I have, uh, that I've ever seen what I just saw. That was awesome. That was an example of, <laughs> oh, no, no, for real. Because, you know, I do this so that you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And if you're going to come to me with lame excuses, I'm, I'm not going to let you off like that. You know, 
All right, so I'm really hoping everybody is getting value from this. And those that are tuning in for the first time, please type in the number one and know that every single Friday from um, 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. AEST, we're going to be answering all the questions as they come. Um, you know, this is raw content. I'm also surprised with some of the answers that I put out out there, but it's all, um, you know, a reflection of the kind of stuff that's within me. I work out every single day um, um, to, to make sure that I'm there and I'm supporting those people that really um, need my assistance and those people that I can actually help by actually helping them, all right? So if, if this show has, um, has been a, a good one for you, please share it. And if this show has been um, helpful, let's tune in again next Friday. Um, you know, and, and, and yes, let's keep the questions going. I'm really, really excited with what we're creating here. This is actually making me happy because it's giving me a platform to actually connect um, with people. And this is also a free consultation. Otherwise, you'll be paying $450 for you to get um, most of the stuff that I'm uh, going on this. And uh, Sofan says 60 minutes of gold nuggets. Thank you so much, my man. Um, at the end of the day, like I always say, um, you really want to put yourself out there. Um, what we have and what we share is deeper than Facebook. Keep in touch. The weekend is going to be um, a fantastic one. If you're going to be traveling for the holidays, just don't forget that you're still going to come back to work. So don't go all the way, um, you know, and forget exactly what it is um, that you're supposed to be doing. Because at the end of the day, I really want to make sure you understand that my mission is to help entrepreneurs such as yourself uh, to set up reliable and lucrative businesses by actually utilizing simple and yet effective processes and, and strategies um, in digital marketing, all right? And I want to really help all the newbies, especially if they're starting off in 2018, bring them along, bring them along so they can actually... Um, you know, get to feel um, the energy that we, we, we share around every single day. I feel like we've built a community around us. I feel like we've built a family. I feel like um, what we're, we're going towards is something that cannot be repeated. You can only experience it. So this is part of my giving um, in as much as so much has happened in my life and you guys have just been there supporting me. I really, really appreciate that. Sandy, Robert, Nicole, Scott, uh, Sofan, you just tuned in for this one. Thank you so much all the way from Morocco and everybody else that was here. Samantha, I hope you, you got a thing or two from that. That wasn't a direct attack at you, but if you feel like that, then shame on you. Um, I really wanted to help you to by actually helping you shake you off a little bit because um, some people just dabble and they're not really serious about what they're doing. I really want that your business is profitable and you actually enjoy working in it. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the unwavering support. And thank you so much for tuning in today.